A megacity of 11 million people is sinking. Not slowly, but so fast entire neighborhoods could vanish within our lifetime. This is Jakarta, Indonesia's capital, collapsing into the ground at record speed. Some districts have already sunk 4 meters. By 2050, huge parts of the city could be underwater. The solution? A $40 billion megaproject of artificial islands, a 32-kilometer seawall, and a last-ditch effort to stop the clock before Jakarta disappears. Let's start with the basics. Jakarta sits in possibly the worst spot imaginable for a major city. Picture a low-lying coastal plain where 13 rivers dump into the Java Sea. Add tropical monsoons that unleash torrential rains for months at a time. Now cram 11 million people into this waterlogged landscape. What could go wrong? Well, everything, as it turns out. The Dutch started this mess back in the 1600s when they established Batavia. Being Dutch, they did what they knew best. They built canals everywhere, trying to recreate Amsterdam in the tropics. Smart, right? No, it was wrong. They completely misunderstood the tropical climate they were dealing with. Poor maintenance led to stagnant water, disease outbreaks, and flooding that never really stopped. Fast forward to 1945. Indonesia gains independence and Jakarta's population explodes. Rural migrants flood the capital seeking opportunities, and the city spreads like wildfire. But here's the problem. Nobody planned for this growth. Informal settlements popped up along riverbanks. Green spaces vanished under concrete. Natural floodplains disappeared. And underneath all this chaos, something even worse was happening. People started drilling. Lots of people. Lots of drilling. You see, only about 25% of Jakarta's households have reliable piped water. The other 75%? They're on their own. So millions of residents began punching holes into underground aquifers to extract water. When you pull water out of the ground, the land above collapses into those empty spaces. It's like deflating a balloon, except the balloon is holding up an entire city. The government knows this is happening. They've known for years. They've introduced regulations, required permits, launched awareness campaigns. But enforcement? Basically non-existent. The Corruption Eradication Commission found over 10,000 illegal wells in a single survey. That number has only grown since then. And here's the really messed up part. The people doing the most drilling are often the ones who have no other choice. Poor communities can't afford piped water connections. Water companies actually make more money from community hydrants than individual household connections. So there's zero incentive to expand infrastructure to poor neighborhoods. It's a vicious cycle where the most vulnerable people are literally undermining the ground beneath their own feet. Walk through North Jakarta today, and you'll see the consequences everywhere. Abandoned office buildings with their ground floors completely submerged in stagnant water. Fish markets where the walkways curve up and down like roller coasters because the ground keeps shifting. Luxury villas where wealthy residents spend thousands every few months fixing cracks that appear in walls and foundations. Suke C a 60-year-old grandmother who runs a small shop in the waterfront neighborhood of Morabaru, points to marks on her doorframe showing where floodwaters reached during the devastating 2007 floods. About two meters high. But here's the thing that'll blow your mind. The seawall protecting her community is also sinking. Every year, the tides get a little higher relative to where she's standing. Faced with this unprecedented crisis, Indonesia did what any sensible country would do. They called the Dutch. The Netherlands have been fighting the sea for centuries. They know a thing or two about keeping water where it belongs. Dutch engineers looked at Jakarta's situation and proposed something that sounds like it came straight out of a superhero movie. The National Capital Integrated Coastal Development Program. Friends call it the giant seawall in Great Garuda projects. This is a massive 32-kilometer seawall arcing across Jakarta Bay like a giant concrete rainbow. But it's not just a wall. It's a complex system that would create an enormous artificial lagoon capable of storing rainwater and managing river flow. Add 17 artificial islands built through land reclamation, all arranged in the shape of a Garuda, Indonesia's mythical national bird. Because if you're going to build something this crazy, you might as well make it look cool from space. The Dutch aren't making this up as they go along. They built something similar in the 1920s called the Afsludiek a 32-kilometer barrier that saved large chunks of the Netherlands from catastrophic flooding. That project involved massive ships dredging material and dumping it onto the seafloor until it poked above the surface. Then they strengthened it with rocks, raised it higher with sand and clay, and topped it with grass to hold everything together. Jakarta's version would be infinitely more complex. This wall needs to support its own massive weight 
plus potentially huge new developments, including skyscrapers on the reclaimed islands. The construction plan involves multiple phases. First, strengthen existing coastal defenses. By 2030, extend these into a giant seawall stretching across the entire bay. By 2050, complete the wall and transform it into a massive freshwater reservoir. But this is one of those things that's easier said than done. The wall must integrate sophisticated floodgate systems to control water flow from Jakarta's 13 rivers. The artificial islands need extensive reinforcement using concrete, sand, gravel, and clay. The entire structure has to withstand not just normal tidal forces, but increasingly extreme weather events. Sounds amazing, right? Well, not everyone's buying it. Environmental scientists are having collective panic attacks over this project. They warn that walling off Jakarta Bay could create an ecological nightmare. All that polluted river water that currently flows out to sea? It would get trapped inside the wall, potentially turning the bay into what critics call a septic lagoon filled with toxic waste. The barrier would also mess with marine ecosystems, alter sea currents, and possibly cause erosion of nearby islands. But the environmental concerns pale next to the human cost. Coastal communities, especially traditional fishing villages, have been facing mass evictions. Entire neighborhoods get bulldozed with just a few days' notice. Residents are told to move to concrete apartment blocks located more than 10 miles inland, far from the fishing grounds and tourism businesses where they actually work. Sahali, a 58-year-old fisherman who's worked Jakarta Bay for 30 years, says that, We're the ones who live and work here, but nobody's consulting us about our futures. The elite, the politicians, and the rich are making the decisions, but they don't care about us or understand us. So, as you can see, the displacement has exposed some ugly social dynamics. Many of the waterfront developers are Chinese-Indonesian business families, while the displaced communities are predominantly Indonesian Muslims. The new luxury developments aren't even being marketed primarily to locals. They're targeting overseas Chinese buyers from Singapore, Malaysia, Hong Kong, and mainland China. You can imagine how well that's going over with people getting kicked out of their ancestral fishing villages. Progress on this mega-project has been, shall we say, disappointing. Construction started with great fanfare, but face planted spectacularly in 2017 due to corruption scandals. Investigators discovered that developers were bribing city officials over zoning laws. The government slapped a moratorium on the artificial islands, leaving four half-built structures sitting in Jakarta Bay like abandoned Lego projects. Of the originally planned 17 islands, 13 have been completely cancelled. Only about 13 kilometers of coastal barriers have been finished, nowhere near the ambitious timeline promised in the original plans. High-profile investors like SoftBank have pulled out due to governance concerns. The project is years behind schedule and bleeding money. This is particularly terrifying because experts say Jakarta has until 2030 to implement effective solutions before hitting a point of no return. After that, the combination of land subsidence, rising sea levels, and intensifying storms could overwhelm any defensive measures. We're talking about catastrophic flooding that would be impossible to control. So what's plan B? Glad you asked. Indonesia decided to build an entirely new capital city from scratch. Meet Nusantara, their $35 billion attempt to start over in the jungles of Borneo, hundreds of miles from Jakarta's flood-prone coast. Construction started in 2022 with a five-phase timeline aiming for completion by 2045. The marketing materials promise a smart, green metropolis powered by renewable energy. Recent footage shows progress on a presidential palace designed like, you guessed it, a Garuda, plus new highways connecting the site to other regions. Apparently, the Indonesian government really loves that mythical bird. But Nusantara has its own serious problems. The construction site is eating into protected forests that serve as critical habitat for endangered orangutans. Environmental groups are freaking out about potential damage to one of the world's most biodiverse ecosystems. Indigenous Dayak communities are getting displaced for the second time in recent history, and the new presidential palace looks suspiciously like the Palace of Versailles, which is a great look during an economic crisis. Oh, and the project is already struggling financially. Initial international investors have bailed forcing greater reliance on state funding. Critical infrastructure like the airport remains unfinished, despite all the publicity about the fancy palace construction. So let's recap where we stand. Jakarta continues sinking at an unprecedented rate. The $40 billion seawall is partially built and mired in controversy. The new capital city faces environmental backlash and funding problems. And every day, more illegal wells get drilled, pushing Jakarta further toward its potential underwater fate. 
Meanwhile, residents in the hardest hit areas live with daily reminders of their precarious situation. Seawalls built after the devastating 2007 floods are already cracking and leaking. During high tides, water pours over the barriers and floods neighborhoods with increasing frequency. Some residents have raised their homes on stilts or moved furniture to upper floors during flood season. Others have simply accepted that their neighborhoods may be uninhabitable within decades. The psychological impact of living in a literally disappearing city creates a unique form of climate anxiety affecting millions of people. Imagine trying to plan for your kid's future when you're not sure if your neighborhood will exist in 20 years. This isn't just Indonesia's problem. Jakarta serves as the political, cultural, and financial center for a nation of 280 million people spread across more than 17,000 islands. If Jakarta collapses, the regional economic consequences would be devastating. Plus, whatever solutions work here could influence how other coastal megacities deal with similar challenges. Cities like Bangkok, Manila, and parts of Miami are experiencing significant subsidence and flood risks. The whole situation of Jakarta represents a perfect storm of natural vulnerability, rapid urbanization, inadequate infrastructure, and climate change impacts. Unlike gradual environmental changes that allow for adaptation over generations, Jakarta's crisis demands immediate action with limited resources and competing priorities. And here's what makes this situation truly wild. We're watching in real time whether modern engineering can actually save a major city from the forces of nature. This isn't a theoretical problem or a distant threat. This is happening right now to 11 million people. The clock is ticking, the money is flowing, and the world is watching. Jakarta's race against time continues, and nobody knows how this story ends. Will the $40 billion seawall actually work? Can Nusantara provide a viable alternative? Or will we witness the first major climate-induced collapse of a modern megacity? The next few years will determine whether 11 million people can continue calling Jakarta home. Whatever happens, coastal cities around the world are taking notes. Because let's face it, Jakarta might be the fastest sinking city today, but it probably won't be the last. But for now, keep an eye on Visionary, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you'll be the first to know when it's all set. Until next time.